beloved viewers, my name is Jimmy Hanks and welcome to the Holy Drive Show. Success is a journey made up of steps that you have to take one day at a time. If you try to run, you crash. This evening, ladies and gentlemen, I'm honored to be hosting an amazing gentleman. My OB, what an honor to sit with a man that one, at one point, I was within the DH eating posha and beans. It's a great honor seeing him grow from one step to another, God lifting him from glory to glory. He is a prominent young man in our circles of the youth. But above all, he knows God. I'll talk briefly about the guest halfway this evening. He's an author of the book called Enshuro. Eh? Those who understand when you can pick Enshuro. In short, the book is titled Life of a Christian University Student. He served as a chairman of Scripture Union Law School at Uganda Christian University. Once again, I want to invite many youth to, to embrace supporting each other because it's until we come to an agreement as young men that we can move the world and nations. Ladies and gentlemen, I'll take a small break. But before I go for a break, big shots to Hush Suits at California Plaza. Yeah, he has awesome suit. I think you can see him looking good today. Yeah, at that point, I'll take a small break. I'll be right back with the guest halfway this evening. Stay tuned. You're welcome, my brother. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure having you on the Holy Drive show. Much of great. Yes, who is Kabango? All right, thank you so much. Uh, my name is John Mark uh, Kabango. Uh, I'm a believer in Christ. I got born again on uh, 4th May 2020. 2020. And wow. uh, I'm a third generation of the Christian revival movement uh, from Western Uganda. That's what I can you say. Get... Maybe uh, I'm a lawyer by profession. Uh, I just graduated from uh, Uganda Christian University School of Law. So, and I work at uh, Ntambrechi Kandeve and Company Advocates. In short, you are a counsel, counsel Kabango, John Mark. That's right. You gave your life to Christ in 2020. Because uh, you're still a young man, there are a lot of things you'd, you'd opt. Well, uh, that's a bit uh, interesting. But here's the thing. Salvation, there's no age. Uh, you can get saved at four. Mm. You can get saved at 100 years. So salvation is regardless of our age. The thing is that you've gotten saved. That's the most important thing. Mm. So I got born again by the grace of God. Mm. And that's why I'm here right now. I can't really tell you the reason, yes. but really it's by the grace of God. That but God. some say when you're still a young man, you first enjoy life. If you give your life to Christ when you're still young, you're going to miss out, you know, on the world. You don't have to first enjoy, first move around, you know, gather testimony. What's your say about that? What's joy behind, uh, what's joy really outside salvation? That's something like disaster waiting to happen. There is no joy. True joy, the true joy, the true joy of a man is after being saved, receiving the grace of Jesus Christ. That's the true joy. That's what I can tell you. But actually, some say there's also joy in the world. They party, you say they're having drinks, they're enjoying. So how do you justify that? That's not joy. That's a short time. That's something that is of three, four minutes and it's done. But with salvation, it's as long as you're still living until eternity, forever. So you just can judge for yourself. Wow. Mm. Glory be to God. I love what you're saying. So Mr. John Kavango, where do you come from? Oh, thank you. I come from uh, a village called Burunga. Burunga. Yeah, it's in Kazo district. <laughs> All right, I say hello to you. Yes. I'm glad to, uh, to be coming from that side of Bronga. Wow. Mm. So you've been raised up from that place? Sure. Uh, uh, I grew up from uh, a deep uh, Christian family. Mm. Uh, just like I told you, I'm a third generation of uh, the revival movement that broke out from that very area. And that's why uh, 
I'm really excited to be coming from uh, a Christian family. So you're born from a Christian family, but you gave your life to Christ in 2020. That's right. People feel like if you're born from a Christian family, it's automatic that you have to embrace this. What made you take time to accept the Lord? Well, that's uh, a kind of ideology, I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, salvation is not a family thing. Uh, salvation is not... Uh, uh, a society thing. Salvation is an individual thing. Mm. And you don't get it just because you're from a family, a particular family. You get mm. it specifically that you've uh, actually accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Wow. That's right. So how was life growing up? Oh, thank you. Uh, we grew up in a really a loving family. Uh, you know, had uh, my parents, I grew up with my parents, my father and mother. I grew up with my grandfather and my grandmother, the paternal side. They were really exciting uh, people uh, of their present day and age, quoting scripture, quoting proverbs, and it was really an exciting uh, uh, situation. It was really exciting to grow up in that very family, and it really nurtured me until uh, I later on gained understanding and wisdom uh, to take up my own responsibility. And that's why I'm here, by the grace of God. Wow, how many children were you? <laughs> oh, uh, we actually uh, three. I'm in between uh, two girls, uh, my sister Patience, uh, who is my eldest uh, sister, and Porite, uh, my young sister. Uh, so Every so. man has a story. Kabango. That's right. And every man has where they've come from. That's right. John Mark Kabango. That's right. While growing up, was life easy? Was it soft? The people might say, me, when I was growing up, it was a hassle. Me, by the grace of God, I found when everything was there. For your story, how is it? Uh, really, what I can tell you as a believer is that uh, the most fundamental thing uh, I really love uh, from where I grew up from is that there was Christ, there was salvation. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the most fundamental thing that, cause that's the ultimate truth and that's the ultimate uh, fundamental thing that every man from wherever, from past history, present history, and the future history that will be written about, that's the best gift. Mm -hmm. And that's how I'm really proud uh, about wow. that. So that was the secret. Wow. You got it. The guest I have for you tonight, ladies and gentlemen, is still a young man, but an author of a book called Enshulo. I'll be going into the book. It's an amazing one. But before I go to the book, John Mark, how I've been able to cope up with oppression, because you're still a young man, a lot of temptation, a lot of, you know, there are those waves you might have encountered. And if you're not careful, many young boys, I think you've seen, have gone down. I've buried two of my close friends. Some have gone to be with the Lord before their time. Because of alcohol, someone drinks. Hey, after drinking, he over drinks, then he dies. You know, funny, funny incidents. So as a young man, how have you been able to sustain yourself? Right. Good looking, healthy. Salvation is about commitment. Mm. There's nothing more difficult, more dangerous, more painful like having salvation mm. and then you lose it along the way mm. and you go back uh, to the world affairs that's something so painful mm. salvation is something more of commitment it is something that you only uh, that you gain consolidate till you die not just for a certain period not just when you're down or weak, mm. but till you have to go all the way until the finish line. Wow. That's the most thing, wow. that's the most fundamental thing that wow. we should that think about. That is amazing. Thank you so much, John Mark. You're welcome. I'll ask you this question which lead me to the book of Eshuru. Okay. How did you meet Christ in 2020? What pushed you to say enough is enough, I choose to follow Christ? Actually, my salvation was a bit, uh, uh, unique. No one preached to me. 
was it was a Sunday night. Mm. Uh, it was just in uh, actually before my salvation. I was despite growing up in a Christian family. I was I had also tilted. I remember there are some moments where I usually not even believing uh, said that. Do really these things of faith are they functional? Is it real, or it's just you know a social structure, something like that? That's the type of kind of mindset mm. that I had. But by the grace of God, and you know, salvation is a gift that we do not work for it, but it's by the grace of God that we get it. So it's just you know a random Sunday evening. I was at Uncle Gasham's home mm. in Mark India. He's my uncle. And uh, this is, they were even surprised that that night I could lead praise and worship. I remember singing this song of, there is something today in the house of the Lord you don't know and we didn't know that. Then at around 12.21 a.m., I just have a you know, unique encounter. I'm just listening. I was playing songs on my phone. I had several, all kinds of phone. You remember, we were still at the mm. entire school. Yes, I do all these uh you know athlete or these songs that really are for the pressure like but, yes. but the sacra sacra music mm -hmm. and by the grace of god i got born again actually the song that was praying by that time was i'm no longer slave to fear and in that i just had a different encounter a unique encounter I found myself uh lifted up praying uh sweating sneezing I prayed for the next three hours, and in that particular time, deep inside me, I realized that I had received Christ, and started from then and then, never turned back. I wow. continued. That That's was your turning, that was the encounter with God. True, true. Every man has their day when you encounter God. At times I think you have to wait until God, and it's God who has called, and he knows the right time. So when he, when he encounters you, trust me, your life can't remain the same. So that leads us to the book entitled um, Enshuro. The book is Enshuro. That's right. It's actually yeah. Enshuro, yeah. Life of a Christian, Christian versus student. student. It's the same. It's so so what up. drives you to write this book? Entitled Enshuro, a Life of a Christian University Student. Actually, it's going to be launching it on the 1st of September. That is next Sunday at where? What's the venue of the At Kingdom Kampala. Kingdom Kampala, just right here where we are behind. That's mm -hmm. where Kingdom Kampala, Nell Avenue. At what time? From 2. From up 2. Up to 6 p.m. Up to 6. Please come and support us, bro. We need to support young men of God that are really trying to push the message. University students, all busy of Ntare School, but now have a senior Ntare School, Mbara High School, where I, oh, everyone, please like, come and we support our own John Mark. I'll be there myself to support a brother. That's right. Purpose to be there. So let's go to the book. Sure. And sure. Hmm. What drives you to write this book, Life of a Christian University Student? Uh, my brother Jimmy, yes. a university mm. all around the world, it's a place where there's very many people from different walks of life, mm. different tribes, different regions, different countries, all gathered in one place. Mm. And with different ideologies, different thinking, different belief system. And as Christians, if we don't take watch, if we don't be mindful, mm. we may lose that mm. that we carry. Wow. So I wrote this particular mm. book to a Christian student who is at any university or who is joining, who is yet to join, who has the dreams of joining a university around the globe. I wrote this book purposely to them so that they don't tilt from what they've been called for, but mm. stay true and stay focused to what they've been called for. And that's the identity with Jesus Christ. So that was the journey. conviction. So they need to give you this copy or you, should, sh you, you start you st you break down for us uh, no, the yeah. content? I wrote it. So, so you, you know. So let us start true. chapter mm. one. Mm talks about transitioning to university. That's right. You can briefly tell us about this book. Okay, so how you can package the book for people to understand more about it. Oh, well, transitioning to university, that was actually chapter one. Mm. 
And uh, these are uh, students who have been in high school, mm. high schools, mm. and uh, they are now joining the university. Mm. At least from the Ugandan setting, mm. uh, the university, you first have to finish high school and then you go to the university. Mm. So, as people are yet to join the university, they come from strict uh, mm. policies of mm. schools and what have you in families, and now they are into a different kind of uh, uh, community mm. setting that's the university. So now how do we transition? Should, we keep, should they keep on with the same mindset? Mm. Not, they have to transition. So now I wrote about how they can transition from the old system to the new system that is at hand and that needs really ultimate attention. Wow. So I wrote about the need to be, uh, to know that you are not alone. Mm. A Christian believer, a Christian student who identifies with Christ, they are not on their own. They have someone, and that's Jesus Christ. I also talk about the need to be hopeful, mm. to embody hope in the face mm. of uncertainties, and mm. to know that God is with them. Mm. That's the most fundamental thing. And uh, lastly, I talked about the need to be, to adapt, mm. the adaptability. Mm. They need to refashion mm. to the current demands. That's actually chapter one. That is chapter one. You know, when you're transitioning from high school to campus, at times there are many challenges we encounter. True. And the way you've said it, at times when you're in high school, is when life is a bit soft. When you're at campus, most especially the ladies, oh my God, if you're not strong, you can easily go off. Okay, it's not only the about pressure. ladies, mm. it's everyone. Man, mm. they, they are anxious. They, 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 they want to get a match in the blink of an eye. You see your friend is driving a car, you feel, how come I don't have that car? You want to go and get a shortcut to buying the car. But you don't know what the person has gone through to get that car. Mm. 